Hello, welcome back everybody. Welcome to episode six of Tacky Talks. This is episode six. We're talking about um, applications to non-Ontario schools, except for Quebec, which we'll be doing in another episode because there's just too many schools. Um, so this is non-Ontario schools that aren't Quebec schools. Um, it sees, it's episode six, um, but it's episode three of our application admissions series. Um, so, Advate, what did you get up to this week? Hello, my friends. My name is Advate. Um, what did I get up to this week? That's a good question. I'm just chilling. I'm relaxing. You know, I went to uh, Point Pelee actually with a couple of people um, this past weekend, and that was pretty fun. We just kind of went on some the hiking question. trails. Yeah. The question is, did you bike to Point Pelee? No, I would have biked. Listen, I 100% would have biked to Point Pelee. But, like, I don't think the people I was going with would have wanted to bike there. (laughs) They weren't about that life. They weren't about that life. Actually, I saw, like, there was a group of, like, 20, 30 bikers, motorcycle bikers, at Point Pelee, which was, I don't know why they were there. But uh, they're they're promoting something health related. I forgot what. There was bikers there. I didn't see any of those Snapchats that you sent. You did? Oh yeah. Not a single one of the many, many, (laughs) many, many many motorcycles. Many Many motorcycles. motorcycles. (laughs) But yeah, I uh, I don't know what what was going on there, but I think they're promoting some health thing because they also came on um, like they're around Windsor Regional Hospital as well, and like I think Windsor Regional Hospital posted something on Facebook, but. Uh, regardless, I'm, I'm getting way too off track here, but yeah, I just went to Point Pelee with a couple of people, went on some hikes, had a pretty good time. How about you, Kylie? I went to the cottage. <laughs> um, woo-hoo! No, it was fun. I was there since Monday, came home for a day to try to work out and burn off a plate of nachos I ate. Um, and then I had some meetings on Thursday and then I drove back up to the cottage and I sat on the beach, which was nice, got got tan, and now I'm back trying to catch up on some work I missed and some meetings, um, but it was a nice relaxing week. I had, like, no service all week, so when you come back, I, like, I, like, I was like, oh, wait, like, I haven't checked Instagram. I, like, have no more Snapchat best friends. I was like, oh, this is kind of nice. <laughs> I didn't have to talk to anyone all week. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I love talking to people. But, yeah, it was a fun week. Haley, what'd you get up to? Um, I lied in bed and stared at the ceiling and listened to folklore uh on repeat over and over and over so and over again good it's so oh God, good so good <laughs> so good folklore so is this new album in case you've been living under a rock highly recommend go listen to it it is so good um but i did actually get out of bed that'd be Not a little surprised. bit concerning if i didn't um I've started this new habit of going on walks every day while listening to murder mystery podcasts. So trying to get my cardio back. So there we go. Uh, and yeah, I had a couple of meetings. I've been working on some all week stuff. It's coming up very quickly. Um, and that was it for me. What an exciting life that I live. Yay. Oh. <laughs> that was the most <laughs> unenthusiastic <laughs> yay ever. Holy crap. Yeah. I was like, that's nice, Haley. Literally just uh, Advait shutting us down over and over What and am over I supposed again. to do when she's saying. Yay! Haley, saying I'm so happy for you. Help. Taylor wow, Swift. I am so happy oh, you got this Thank new you. album and you're Thank able you. to listen to it every day while Thank staring you. at your ceiling and contemplating your life. And uh, hey, it's just amazing. Listen, I'm just depressed. It's a good album, and it deserves all the recognition. It is, in my opinion, the best Taylor Swift since Red, and I love it. I've been, I've listened to it like six Reputation times. Reputation and I, just I have on... a personal connection, but oh, no. Reputation Listen, I'm just it. sad because Kanye was supposed <laughs> to drop an album last Friday, but he didn't. I'm not talking about Kanye with you. We've been over this, and we're not talking about it. Kanye, so, okay. I'm his, shutting Kanye, Ad Bait down. His music. Is I don't good. want to get into this, but like. Kanye doesn't need to release an album right now. Kanye needs to get the help that no, he yeah, yeah, he needs. So, yeah. yeah. I agree. With yeah, Kanye. yeah. If, if the album isn't in it for his mental health, I'm okay with that. He needs. To, he Actually, needs you're to, right about that. No. Yeah, he needs. Uh, he just needs to go see a professional. He needs to yeah. get some help. But yeah, 
Um, All right, let's talk about out of province schools. Or sorry, out of Ontario schools. Before we jump into it, Kylie, will oh, yeah. you hit us up with the most exciting part of the week? The disclaimer. All right, once again, every single week, um, we are merely just students. We do not represent the institution we attend. We are not associated with any of the schools that we're going to talk about today. And all the information that we actually collected today is thanks to Advait. He created an account for all these schools on their websites and collected all the information. Um, so it's just our research. We're not experts. We do not guarantee you're going to get an interview, get accepted. This is just us trying to help you. Uh, so if you have any questions, we'd love to help you. But again, we are not experts and we are not associated with these schools. But yeah, that Beautiful. is our weekly disclaimer. I'm just going to, we should really just have like a sound bite where we play it instead of having you to re-say it every week. But well, it's so it more personal though. when she says yeah. it. Actually, yeah, yeah, no, you're right. You're That's right. how our viewers connect to us. From the yeah, disclaimer, the disclaimer part. <laughs> From the disclaimer. <laughs> just the disclaimer. Nice. They're like, oh, they're, they're students just like me. They don't represent their institution. Perfect. Um, what if they're like, a, what, if, what if they're like president, though, of their student council? Then they are representing their university. Yeah, but not in well, that. No, they don't represent. That's not true. Yeah, they might be like president of their student council, but like we're talking about like we don't represent the school we go to, like admissions. We have nothing to do with them. Undergrads the don't have the like council. school-wide student councils either. You'd be like student council for your department, maybe. No, they have they have know. school-wide student councils. Yeah, we had like CSA, like the oh, like the student union. Yeah. 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 Yeah, okay. I don't think of that as student council because they do uniony things. All right, let's just let's just <laughs> jump into it. Um, Alrighty, let's go. Yeah, starting with Alberta, the University of Alberta, and let's just throw in a, a quick little seating thing that they have here. They have 162 positions in their class in Edmonton, and you just apply on their website, apply.ualberta.ca slash apply and this would pretty much just walk you through everything so go on there make an account and i think that's the best thing to do like if you're interested in actually applying to school go make an account first and just go through their application real quick but the deadline to apply to alberta will be october 15th 2020 for mcat it's actually split into if you're an albertan resident or if you're non albertan so the minimum mcat score to be eligible to apply for your albertan is 124 in each section while for non albertans the minimum mcat score to apply is 128 in cars and 124 in each section so if your car score is a little bit lower then you just know that realistically you might not get an interview there um so that's just something to keep in mind if you're thinking about budgeting and how many applications you should actually send out because for a lot of these schools too you have to pay when you apply so that's something to keep in mind but yeah, if you have written the MCAT more than one time, they're going to choose your best set of scores, which is similar to what a lot of universities do, but not all, which we will talk about as it comes up. Oh, that's no, I thought most of them take your most recent. So the fact they take your best is very nice. Yeah, actually. yeah, yeah. So that's uh, like really helpful for the students. Um, they'll take your best set of scores, but that doesn't mean they mix and match the sections. It's the whole score, right? That would be sweet. Mm -hmm. That would be that'd, that'd be, be so cool. ridiculous. <laughs> You could just um, study what, like, for one section and then go take it four times. That, I'll, I'll, like, no, I would. That sounds like the worst. That sounds like the worst strategy. thing. I know, but think about <laughs> how high your overall score would be. <laughs> I still and wouldn't get. Like, I don't. Yeah. I, I wouldn't want to. I man, I sat through that three times. I would not want to do. I don't suggest that on anyone. Um, but one thing about that one twenty eight, like what Advait was saying, some schools it can change. Like every school, it can change year to year. Uh, they don't make any guarantees, but that 128 hasn't changed in long like, three time. years now. Long yeah, it's time. been a while, like that I've been looking at it. So, yeah, just something to keep it in mind. Could have been that before. Yeah. Um, but yeah, other than your MCAT, uh, you have to provide references as well, and you need two referees, um, who know you personally in a supervisor or professional capacity and can speak about your moral and ethic character. There are no formal letters. What you're going to do is provide the email address. Uh, and contact information for these people and then they'll get emailed kind of like a question sheet which they have to fill out regarding you okay now we're going to talk about transcripts and gpa for alberta so if you're an albertan applicant 
The minimum cumulative GPA is 3.3 out of a 4.0 grading scale. If you're non-Albertan, this is going to be 3.5 on a 4.0 grading scale. Um, if you have a master's or PhD, you just get added points in your total score, which they'll use when determining whether or not you'll get an interview. So you can send transcripts, um, like your school can mail it to Alberta, or you can send it electronically at transcripts at ualberta.ca. Go on their website. They have all the information there on how to send your transcripts. Um, you want to make sure the transcript is well in before the deadline. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, so yeah, October 15th deadline. Want to make sure your transcripts are in by then. Um, February 1st, you want to send in a updated transcript with your grades from your new semester and the courses you registered for second semester. And then I think June 15th, you have to send in one more transcript. And I think that might be after you get your acceptance. So that's just making sure that, you know, you've completed your year and that you are good to go for personal activities. So now we're getting into some of the non-academic requirements. This is where you get to, you know, talk about some of the clubs you've been part of, some of the volunteering you've done. But there are, they have different things you can put in for employment, leadership roles, volunteer work, and life experiences and achievements. Um, you have a minimum of one entry to a maximum of four for each section. By not including any items in these sections, you're accepting a zero for that section. So that's something you want to keep in mind. You want to try to have at least one thing in each section. You want to have details about the activity as well, the time commitment, things like that. And then you're going to need verifier for these activities, which uh, they have the ability to contact. But yeah, uh, make sure you tell your verifier that you are choosing them or ask them for permission as well, because that's really important to do. Um, and finally, there's a section called personal highlights, which is three essay kind of questions. The first one is to describe your top two personal achievements. The second question is to share a life experience where you encounter challenges and describe how you address those situations. And the third one is to share any experiences that you had, which was significant enough to have be life altering. So those are three very heavy questions, which you might want to spend some time thinking about. But just know that you will have to complete those as well. Finally, you will have to complete the Casper in the fall and your score has to be sent in uh, no later than January 1st, 2021. But that is everything for Alberta. That was a lot of stuff. One school of down. One school down. One school down. Um, Six to go. Before we jump into Calgary, uh, one other thing I just want to say about Alberta, and this is kind of like like an anecdotal thing, like you hear through students and through people applying and you see it online. Um, with Alberta, they definitely check verifiers. Like, I've seen most people's verifiers get contacted for Alberta, whether they're being accepted mm -hmm or sorry, not, or whether they're being invited for an interview or not, or whether they're accepted or not. Um, I had a friend who applied a few years ago and they contacted all her verifiers and didn't invite her for an interview. Uh, so they that's contact mean. everyone. Yeah. So um, that's just something to know. I know some people like knowing that information uh, and not that I'm so, like, by no means am I saying that you should like make up verifiers for other schools. You should make them, they should be 100% legit. Do not make that up. That is a big no-no. Um, don't lie on your application. But I know some people like to know that kind of stuff. That's Anyways. like a red flag thing. Like if they find yeah. out that one of your verifiers is not real or is not like legit. Or like forged. That's really or, bad. Don't do Yeah, that. that is like a we are not going to further look at your application type offense. Yeah. Wait, uh, so I can't I don't... use like my dog as a verifier? Woof, woof. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, anyway. You, know, you don't have a dog. Are we... I can't use somebody that else's dog as worse. a verifier. Buster can be your verifier. <laughs> Buster will do it. <laughs> he is old and wise. <laughs> he has diabetes. Uh, all right. Before we get to our drag, let's talk about Calgary. Um, so, Calgary is the second medical school in Alberta of the two. And before you start, even like with your application for Calgary, they've made a whole admissions manual. So download that and read that. Um, you can find it on their website, but it's uh, coming.ucalgary.ca and then forward slash MD program, forward slash future students, forward slash admissions. Um, just Google it. You'll find it. <laughs> um, with that, 
Uh, some quick facts. <laughs> um, you're going to apply on their website, just like Alberta, um, which is ucalgary.ca. And the application deadline is October 1st, 2020 at 4 p.m. Um, that's mountain time, right? MDT? I, I don't know what so. MDT is. I'm not sure either. But that's Calgary an important time. note about time zones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, pay attention to them because they're not they're yours, different. maybe. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, with that, Calgary is also a three-year program, uh, just like Mac. So it's one of the two three-year programs in Canada. And they had 155 spots last year, but they make no guarantee for the class size this year. And 85, 85% of their seats are reserved uh, for Alberta residents. And what consider or what constitutes someone being an Alberta resident is actually pretty interesting. So you need to spend two years in Alberta on a day to day basis between your 15th birthday and your first day of classes. So you don't need to be born in Alberta. Um, let's say you were born in Ontario and then you go do a two year master's in Alberta. That would make you an Alberta resident uh, in their eyes or make you an Alberta, an ap- Alberta applicant. <laughs> a lot of A's. Um, you can also be an active member for 24 months in the Canadian Armed Forces or the RCMP. And that also uh, puts you in the classification as an Alberta resident. Um, And you need a letter from your commanding officer supporting that your active duty dates by October 1st. So another letter to add. Um, They also, one other group that can be included in the Alberta resident GPA and MCAT eligibility criteria is any student who um, attended Selkirk College Rural Pre-Medicine Program located in Castlegar, British Columbia. And whether or not you're an Alberta resident, if you attended that program, you will be looked at uh, with the Alberta resident MCAT and GPA eligibility. So with that, what is their MCAT score? <laughs> um, so the last eligible MCAT setting would be, it's going to be September 12, 2020 this year uh, to get your scores in before the deadline. And they look at every single section um, on your MCAT, but they're one that they really pay attention to is CARS. So not that they're ignoring the other ones, they do look at it, but for non-Alberta applicants, you must have a minimum CAR score of 128 in order to apply. Um, Alberta applicants are not subject to the CAR's minimum. With that, um, the GPA, non-Alberta residents require a minimum GPA of a 3.8, and Alberta applicants require a minimum GPA of a 3.20. Um, with your transcripts, <clears throat> again, they have to be sent from your registrar's office to admissions at Calgary by the deadline. And they also have something unique, which is you have to outline why you chose your undergraduate degree and why you selected the courses uh, outside of your degree, which is really strange. I've never seen that in any other school, but that's kind of cool. And it's a 500 word max for that explanation. Um, and just keep in mind that you do need to manually insert your course name and grades into their application. It does take a little bit of time. It is kind of tedious. So make sure you leave some extra time for that as well. Uh, They also have some special circumstances around removing grades. Uh, So applicants who have completed or um, will have completed their undergraduate degree before starting the MD program will have their lowest GPA year removed um, from the calculation. The lowest GPA year must have a minimum of 18 graded unit credits included in the GPA calculation. So that's like a lot. (laughs) Um, We were just talking about this before. We wish that like Canadian schools would just like standardize what a credit is go to their website um it's best to get the information from them about what a credit is for each course and that'll tell you um what you need for your gpa calculation but i'm pretty sure that means that like you need a full credit like you need a full year of courses you can't do part-time courses that year with that they also have the 10-year exclusion rule so um if you have any academic um history I guess, Uh, from the 2009-2010 academic year and earlier, you can uh, choose to have that removed from your GPA calculation, but it's like an all or none rule. You can't pick and choose what gets to stay and what gets to leave. It's everything um, from those before 10 years from now gets removed. And you need to make sure that you have like academic um, courses and like an academic course load uh, within the past decade uh, for them to use that to base it off of. With that, um, you also do need references. So you need three, uh, one that shows a commitment to community and advocacy, one that shows interpersonal behavior and collaboration, and another that shows organizational and management skills and leadership. Your referees will be given questions about you, um, and you have to also explain why you chose these referees on your application page. So Alberta definitely wants you um, to make a lot of explanations. Finally, um, you also have to do another explanation, which is under your other info section, and you have to outline your alternate plans if you are not admitted to the medical program this year. 
And then they also have a publication section. So they want you to talk about your publications and presentations in the following order. So they want peer-reviewed academic publications, published abstracts would be next from oral and or poster presentations, non-peer-reviewed academic or non-academic applications, and then presentations at regional, national, or international meetings. They also have an award section, an employment section, so talk about those parts of your application, as well as a top 10 experiences. So applicants are given the opportunity to identify up to 10 activities or uh, experiences that they feel are important and define them as individuals. They can be employment, volunteer, life experiences, awards or educational or research experiences. You need a verifier for each activity. So please note um, that you can like enter it twice. So if you've already talked about it in your employment section or your award section, um, you can talk about it in your top 10 experiences and they understand that it'll be on your application twice. Last um, but not least, you have an additional comment section. This section should only be used if you're talking about um, a poor GPA year or a poor MCAT score. Um, it should not be used to write an essay on why you think you um, or to talk about your research or why you want to study medicine. Oh my goodness, that was a lot of information. Um, again, they what have a nosy a whole... school. <laughs> yeah, they have a they. they I mean, I kind of like it. You know, for me, I like had I as everyone knows I had a little bit of a lower GPA and so it'd be nice to like explain things I guess um but yeah keep that in mind there's going to be a lot of writing um and to prepare for that but with that Haley you want to take it away with UBC yeah I just Alberta's like what did you do before us and why and what are you going to do if you don't get in and why and why did you choose it it's like okay chill it might also have to do a lot with like stats again I don't know who reads all that are you paying them? I hope you're paying them to read all that. A hundred percent, they're getting paid. <laughs> yeah, that's a job. volunteer thing. Can I volunteer to um, uh, read for them? I, I love reading no. stuff like that. Me too. It's because it I'm very nosy. Yeah, because everyone has like such different um, circumstances and stuff. But yeah, I just like to know about people's lives. Exactly. Um. Okay, so next up is UBC. Um, so UBC is a big class. They take 288 students into their program. Um, they have two application deadlines actually. So the first is September 1st. That's their early application deadline. And if you apply by September 1st, then you can have your interview date a little bit earlier. Uh, and then the second normal application deadline is October 1st. And then you would just be in a normal pool of when you get to go interview. Um, their MCAT deadline this year is December 1st, so you don't have to have your MCAT score submitted to them until December 1st. You do apply through their website, um, and there is an account creating fee, so you will not be able to save anything that you put in there, your, any of your information, whatever, until you pay $50, um, and that creates your account, and then you are good to go. Uh, GPA... For GPA, BC uses percentages, so if you're a BC applicant, that's 75% um, minimum, and if you're out of province, you need an 85% minimum for your GPA. Um, you can apply after you're th having only completed three years, so as long as you have 30 courses done by April 30th of the year, year of entry into medical school, so i.e. as long as you finish your third year of school, um, by the year that you would be going into medical school, you are good to go. Uh, for transcripts, your school has to send the transcript and you have to include transcripts from every post-secondary institution that you've attended and that all needs to be in by the admissions deadline. UBC also has a prereq, so they require that you have a full year or two semesters of English. Um, you can check their website for a little bit more information on this, but they do accept IB, AP, or A-level exam results. So there's a minimum score that you have to get on each of those exams, which go check out the website for that. But if you've taken English, AP, IB, or A-level um, in high school, you can use that to satisfy your English credits. Those scores will not be used towards your GPA calculation. No, they're only used to say that you've met the English requirements. That's all it's for. Uh, and you will have to provide documentation of that, obviously, and all of those instructions are on the website. Uh, BC uses an adjusted academic average, so they'll drop your lowest year if you have completed a four-year degree um, and use that as your academic average. 
For the MCAT, there's a minimum score of 124 in each of the four sections, um, and that is due by December 1st, like I said before. For non-academic criteria, they assign you a score based on everything you've filled out. So it's kind of like an AB, like the OMSAS ABS, or what we've been talking about that pretty much every other school requires, where you put in all your activities. And they say that they assign higher scores if you demonstrate significant levels of responsibility, initiative, or commitment. And then the score would be a little bit lower if it's of minimal duration or minimal degree of responsibility. So basically they're looking for activities where you've dedicated a lot of time or you've had a lot of responsibility. Those are what they wanna mostly see on your application. You do need verifiers, they will contact your verifiers. Um, and that's something that I've heard about UBC as well is that they do contact your verifiers. <laughs> You can list up to three leadership, three service ethic, five capacity work with others, 10 diversity of experience, and three high performance in an area of human endeavor entries. That's what so, does that mean? That's what so, does that uh, mean? So vague. I don't know. High performance in an area of human endeavor. What kind of endeavors do you do that aren't so, human? Like I was a superhero. I saved <laughs> yeah, I the think world. Yeah, that would get you in. <laughs> I'm actually Batman. So, I'm actually Batman. <laughs> I'm Batman. <laughs> I, I can't do the Batman voice. Batman. We're all Batman. Um, so there's 350 character limit to describe each of these. And you can only list each of your experiences once. If you're not sure, like just put it into whatever category you think it fits best, even if it overlaps a little bit. Uh, there's also tabs for employment, research, and awards where you can fill out information about each of those things. The other non-academic they, thing they use is a little bit of an essay. Um, I think it's asking for your experience in rural, remote, remote, northern, or indigenous settings or community ties and relevant activities, and they use this to decide your suitability for the Northern Medical Program. So UBC has a couple different campuses going on. Um, and the three they mentioned here are Northern Medical Program, Southern Medical Program, and Island Medical Program. And they use your explanation of your experiences in rural, remote, Northern Indigenous settings and community ties to decide where you kind of fit in. Um, they also have an opportunity for you to put in additional info. So any circumstances about your application that you think the admissions committee needs to know. So again, this would probably be used to explain like a poor GPA, a poor MCAT, something along those lines. UBC is interesting because they do not require references until the interview stage. So they will not accept reference letters in advance of that. If you get invited for an interview, then they ask for your references and they give you those instructions about where to send all of that and who it needs to be when you get your interview invite. So don't worry about references um, until then. And that is it for UBC. So now we're going to move in the other direction over to Manitoba. I mean, when you're from UBC, like you have to move to the other direction because <laughs> you're on like Always. the complete you're West. But yeah. Um, just for UBC, I was going to throw in a thing. I just know that a lot of people out of province, out of province to British Columbia do apply to UBC just because it's one of the more um, out of province friendly, I guess, schools in Canada. But like a lot of these schools we're talking about, you know, like high car scores and things like that. So it really um, cuts out a lot of people who don't have that. And UBC like 124, that's all you need for cars. So it's a it's a good you know opportunity but and bc is beautiful yeah and bc yeah. oh my god B BC's amazing. bc is so beautiful bc is amazing i want to go to bc right now anyways let's get on a plane i'll <laughs> meet you at the airport plane, yeah. <laughs> yeah could you imagine my mom letting me on a plane right now nope <laughs> no <laughs> we could bike to bc can't even I... <laughs> <laughs> I mean you could i mean i honestly i That's think i probably school. could i just would need to get a better bike but once you um, get to London, you could just keep going. But you, you know, know like, where I gotta go before really. I get to BC? <laughs> Manitoba. Oh, my transitions. Oh, -hoo -hoo! <laughs> oh so my that transitions. was embarrassing. That was embarrassing. No, it Tell wasn't. me about Manitoba. Okay, so let's talk about Manitoba's <laughs> med school and their application. So their application actually isn't really open yet. Um, 
I'm getting a lot of their information based on last year's application and some stuff that they have put out so far. Like, I know the deadline's going to be October 1st, 2020 for this cycle, but their application is going to open up in August. So if you're interested in applying to Manitoba, I recommend just going on their website in August and checking back to see if they've updated anything, right? Um, but there's four streams you can apply to. Uh, as a Manitoba applicant, you can apply bilingual English French stream and indigenous applicant. And then there's an outer province pool as well. And let's just kind of start into what their requirements are kind of like. If you're wondering if you're a Manitoba applicant or outer province applicant and things like that that they have going on, I recommend just going on their website to check. That's the best thing to do. Um, but they do have some special circumstances if you're in the Canadian Armed Forces and i i think normally what they considered manitoba is just if you've been there for two years following your high school graduation you've been living there so uh that's just like the very basic thing but for more information please go on their website or email them if you're confused about whether you're out of province or manitoba or wherever you are but for academic requirements um your adjusted grade point average has to be 3.3 or higher and they actually do the same thing that uh, BC does with their credits you'll notice that Manitoba's application is very similar to BC's in a lot of senses but uh, what they'll do is if you have at least 90 credit hours they'll remove up to 30 credit hours so that they're kind of looking at three full years and they're, they're, they'll remove your lowest year such that you have 90 total so if you're applying um, in fourth year, they'll probably remove your lowest academic year. If you're applying in third year, they won't really remove anything. But yeah, that's how that works. And they have a cool chart too. If you're wondering how courses get removed or how credits get removed, they have a cool chart on the website where they show different examples and how they would calculate the GPA. Because I know like GPA calculations really annoying. The transcripts should be mailed to the university to the address site before November 1st. Now, once again, like take this date with a grain of salt because I got this from last year's application uh, information that they had. It might change it this year because of COVID. Uh, just keep checking their website to get the exact dates. They have something cool as well where you could request to eliminate your first program of study. So if there's a five year gap between your last registration for your first program of study and the beginning of the registration for your second program of study, you can completely remove your first program of study. So obviously that's you would have a huge break in your studying in order to do that. But that is an option that is available. Um, so for the MCAT, the total score will be used in terms of what will be the final date for the MCAT. I'm not sure, but I'm sure that they would want their score in before the application deadline. So I think that's something to keep in mind. You will also have to take the Casper as well. Um, Manitoba doesn't really care that much about your extracurriculars. It's more about the MMI if you get the opportunity to do it. But um, there are some stuff that they look at, such as enhancing equity and diversity. So for that, they'll look at your socioeconomic and cultural diversity, um, what your rural situation is like, like in rural Canada, and your advanced academic attributes. And to get more information on those things, also go on the website. But like, for example, advanced academic attribute would be like if you had a PhD, they would give you some more points uh, just for having that. And that would help out your application a bit. Similar to UBC, Manitoba does not require reference letters until you get to the interview stage. So for now, you can just chill back. Don't worry about it too much. But even if you're not like giving out interviews right now, it might be a good idea to think about who you might want as an interviewer or not interviewer. I'm so sorry. I mean, referee. <laughs> Could you imagine? Could you imagine interviewing you? Yeah. Like I'll just choose, choose your I interviewer. <laughs> I want my mom as my interviewer. <laughs> but no, just, you know, you don't need your references now for Manitoba and UBC, but just kind of keep the back of, back of your head. Think about it. And you might even want to give them a super early heads up uh, if you know that they're going to be super busy. So I don't know. Maybe you tell them like, hey, I'm applying to Manitoba. They don't need a reference letter right now, but they might ask for more stuff in the future. If I do get an interview, that's not a, a bad idea to do. But yeah, I think that is everything regarding Manitoba. Manitoba. Beautiful. I think it's always important. I think we talked about this in another podcast, but like definitely when you're working with like people who are going to be like your re referees or verifiers, 
as much notice as possible is always the best way to go. Oh, yeah, 100%. 100%. <laughs> For sure. All right. We're going to move. Uh, we should have set this up like west to east or like east to west. I know. We're kind of jumping all over. Uh, it's just all alphabetical right now. Oh. Yeah. oh. I didn't even know this. Wow. All right. Well, we're throwing What's it. What's the alphabet? <laughs> A, B, C. We're throwing it. D, E, F, G. Really? Never heard of her. I want to talk about my school. I'm sorry. sorry. Go. go ahead, Kylie. Go. All right. We're throwing it all the way east to Memorial University in Newfoundland. And I'm going to call it MUN because uh, that's what a lot of people call it. All right. So with MUN, deadline to apply is September 2nd, 2020. And you need to write your MCAT by August 29th, 2020. Um, and MUN needs your scores by October 3rd, 2020. <laughs> um, so those are some important dates to know. Something very interesting about MUN uh, is you apply through the CARMS online admissions application profile. And the reason that all of our faces just changed is because that is how you apply for residency once you get to fourth year, which is something that plagues all of our thoughts during the day. Um, But that's really cool. So there's 80 seats available at MUN. And you... Sorry. (laughs) To be eligible to apply uh, to Memorial... There are some admission requirements, so you need a bachelor's degree by a recognized university or a university college before admission. You're going to need two letters of reference. One of them must be academic. Uh, You need to have an MCAT exam written within six six years of the application deadline. And then new this year, so effective June 1st, 2020, is you also are required to write your CASPER. So there are no minimum cumulative averages for the MCAT at MUN, but in previous years, the MCAT score was 125 to 127 on each section. And then for your GPA, their average GPA has been an overall average of 85% or higher. Transcripts, um, same as every other school for the most part. Uh, You have to send the transcript from your registrar's office to um, admissions at MUN, and you also have to manually insert your grades as well. They do ask for some, like, extracurricular um, entries as well. So they have a section for scholarships and awards. Uh, You have a maximum of 12 entries. Uh, Extracurricular activities, they also have a maximum of 12 entries, as well as employment, again, 12. Uh, You also have an autobiographical info section uh, where you answer some questions. So they have write an autobiographical statement about who you are, how you spend your time, and why. Why do you want to become a physician is the other question. And what do you expect from your day-to-day life as a physician as well? That's crazy. Um, like, what so do you are... expect from your day-to-day life as a physician? Uh, I don't do even know what medicine. to expect. <laughs> like, I expect to be busy. I don't know. Like, I expect to work hard. Um, I expect to eat at the cafeteria. <laughs> like, I don't even know what yep. to put. I know. And I was, doctors love takeout. That's one thing I've noticed. Yeah. They love a good, I mean, They're just I so busy. It's hard for so. them to cook sometimes. Yeah, not to get too off track, but I was on med Twitter the other day, and this one account, or this one girl, was, or this physician, sorry, was, um like, I think she's a physician. It's one of those, you know how there's all those anonymous counts on, tw- like, med yeah. Twitter that, like, people are sharing, like, their unsolicited opinion, um, which I think is, yeah. <laughs> it's really funny. Um, it is quite this, amusing. <laughs> yeah. this I'm pretty sure she's a physician, the one um, account I'm thinking about, but she, uh, she was saying that she, like, she's so busy during the day, she just eats one meal because she's and she her direct quote was i'm lazy so i just make one meal a day and i was like yeah <laughs> i mean cool. intermittent fasting right maybe she's doing that yeah or like we were talking about this the other day at the college of omad one meal a day apparently it's a big I'm like yeah you yeah eat like a dense meal because like a Anyways, lot of this stuff is... oh sorry i was gonna keep going put in my little <laughs> keep wheel but tell like me, me. um like what they're teaching us in class too was we a lot of us just overeat now in the world that we live in because of the portion sizes that we get at restaurants and things like that so it's like one meal like you can actually get all the nutrition you need for that as long as you're getting like it's it's still a healthy meal you know with the right macros but yeah that was my little thing if i don't know why i said that i saw a tweet kylie that was like i was it was somebody who was saying that when they were an undergrad they went and observed in the states because you don't really do that in canada but it was in the states Mm -hmm. And they uh, they were with a neurologist, and they were sitting at like a nursing station, and and she asked, "Is like so? When do you eat lunch?" And everybody started laughing at her. <laughs> no, seriously though, like every time, <laughs> it's like it's true though. Every observership I've done, um, well, in emerge, there's always we always find time to get snacks, but like um, there's no like. Yeah. <laughs> 
Chicken wings. <laughs> I meant my chicken, chicken wings. wings. <laughs> um, sorry, that's totally on topic. But um, no, like, I, there's no, like, break time. Like, it's not like when you have, like, I don't want to say normal job, but, like, a traditional job where, like, you have, like, a 30-minute lunch break. Like, that doesn't happen. You don't take a break. You just keep going. So, I like it, though. Anyways, back to the applying to Mun. Um, Casper. That's what we're talking about. Um, it's new this year, and they have two dates they want you to write it on. I think it's similar to the, or the same ones as uh, Dal. Uh, August 13th, 2020 at 5, or August 30th, 2020 at 1. One really important thing, um, if you're applying to multiple schools that require the Casper, you only write the Casper once. You don't do it multiple times for different schools. I know some students who are not applying to um, schools out of Ontario, they might only be applying to McMaster. They are going to write their exam in October. If you have already written it in August, you do not write it again in October. It's done. It's your one Casper for the entire year. References. Um, you must choose uh, two different references to provide. Uh, one must be academic, like I was saying before. You submit it to the CARMS Document Center by September 2nd as well. And it's your responsibility to make sure that your referees have submitted that. Um, that's why I say give them lots of notice. And you sometimes from time to time do have to annoy them a little bit. Um, so do that in a nice polite way because they're doing you a huge favor, but definitely as much notice as possible for them. Let me uh, throw in something for Casper real quick too. Cause, yeah. uh, just tell us the secrets. Yes. The se- I mean, like I can, we could do a Casper episode in the future. Just a heads up, you know, if you're listening, maybe, uh, keep an eye Write out that in the that. calendar. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get in an interview in Ottawa or McMaster. So I would say probably don't come to me for Casper tips. Don't worry. You can come to me for Casper tips. That's uh, I'm a, I'm a legend. I'm a G. But, uh, what I was going to say was, uh, confidence while Kylie was right. Like you only have to write the Casper once per year. The thing also is that the Casper expires the next year as well. So I know for the MCAT, like mm-hmm. you can write it, um, the MCAT usually lasts five years. I think most schools will go back to, but the Casper, if you got to reapply, you have to write again for the next application cycle. Uh, just as a head. It's up. a quick test though. It, it's a very quick. It's test, not, yeah. it's like an hour, not like, yeah. the, like the MCAT. Um, Okay, so speaking of uh, maritime provinces, next up is Dalhousie. So Dalhousie's in Nova Scotia. It's very near and dear to my heart because I applied, I interviewed, and then I got brutally rejected. Um, But I still love them. So (laughs) Dalhousie actually splits up their seats by, um, like, geographically. So they admit 124 students annually. There are 79 positions for Nova Scotia residents, 30 for New Brunswick residents, six positions for Prince Edward Island residents, and then nine positions for the rest of Canada. Um, You have to have a four-year degree. They will look at your application if you only have, so you can apply to enter after your third year, uh, but they strongly recommend a fourth-year degree. So you can try, but don't get your hopes up is kind of what they're saying um so the first thing you do is to declare whether you're a maritime student or not so if you're from nova scotia new brunswick or pei or the rest of canada and then there are two different deadlines that you have to be aware of so the first is the online application portion which is just like all of your information so it's like where you went to school your unofficial transcripts your contact information and that's due on july 31st so that is if you're listening to this on thursday the day that we released it that's tomorrow um but it only takes a hot second to fill out so go fill it out um and then the second deadline is september 3rd of 2020 that's for section two so that's all your supplemental and essay so all the big writing and stuff that's not due until september 3rd um to be eligible to apply to Dalhousie, you have to have a full course load in your two most senior years. So third and fourth year, or if you're applying to go after your third year, it'd be second and third year. You need to have five courses per semester each semester. Um, you can ask for exception from this. So if there's some reason you couldn't take five courses, that is assessed on a case by case basis. And summer courses don't count. So that needs to be within your fall and winter term. Um, So if you're a resident of the Maritime Provinces, 
you have a the GPA is a minimum of 3.3 on a 4.0 scale each year. So that is not an average, like your overall average. It's saying that you need to have a 3.3 GPA in each of your school years. And then if you're outside of the maritime provinces, you need to have a 3.7 in each of your school years. So again, not an overall average. That's a 3.7 in each of your school years. Um, you start by uploading an unofficial copy of your transcript and then eventually you will have to mail an official copy of your transcript over to Halifax. Um, they're not saying when that's due right now. They're just saying that it will be when COVID-19 restrictions are lifted. Um, so I'm assuming that's because they're not working out of the campus right now. So they're not there to receive the mail. But just keep an eye on the website if you're applying. Um, they're very nice about keeping you informed. So I'm sure if you've submitted everything, they'll probably send an email reminding you. We got emails reminding us when our transcripts were due, but you do have to mail it out there. Um, and again, you want to give yourself lots of time for that letter to get there, especially right now, because everything's kind of backed up. Um, your unofficial transcript does need to be uploaded by July 31st, but that's something that you just get off of like the student center of your undergraduate school. Like it's not, you don't have to order it or anything. It should just be available to you. The minimum MCAT score is 123 in each section for both maritime and non-maritime applicants. They've extended the MCAT deadline this semester, so you don't have to have written your MCAT until September 12th of 2020, which means that the release date of the square would be September 29th of 2020. So usually it's the beginning of August, but they've extended it to September this year. The CASPER, there are two dates to write, and like Kylie said, they're the same for months, so that's August 13th and August 30th of 2020 to write your CASPER. The second portion of your application is your supplemental and essay. So they ask for a personal essay about why you want to be a doctor, what brings you to medicine, all that classic kind of stuff. And that's 1,000 to 1,500 words. And then if you're a non-maritime applicant, you also have to write a 250 word or less essay describing your maritime connection. So it's the maritime connections essay. I wrote about family. I have a lot of family at the Maritimes. My mom is from the Maritime provinces. So we used to go out there and visit all the time when I was younger. So that's what I wrote about. They're asking just for your connections and why you would want to practice in that community. So it is important that you do have those connections if you're out of province because they do look at that, the Maritimes connection essay before they invite you for an interview. Um, and they want to make sure that you are connected because they want to be putting out positions who will stay in the Maritime provinces. And then there's a supplemental information forum, which is the equivalent of the ABS. We actually did get a question to our Instagram shout out. Thanks for sending us questions. Love you guys. That asked what the difference was between the Dalhousie supplemental information and the OMSAS ABS. They're pretty much the same. The only difference is that you can only include activities from your undergraduate and graduate studies or from the past five years. So OMSAS goes from when you were 16 years old and up. So this is a little bit of a smaller time frame. But if you started an activity before, like longer than five years ago, and you're still doing it, you can include that as well. There are seven entries permitted in each section. The sections are extracurricular, volunteer, employment, and award slash research slash achievement. So four sections there, and you do seven entries in each. If you have two or less entries in any of those sections, a box will pop up asking you to explain why you have so few entries. Um, and then they will contact your verifiers, so make sure you have verifiers listed for everything. In the, For the class of 2023, so the class that was admitted last year, the average GPA was a 3.9 and the average MCAT was a 510. And the year that I was applying, the stats for that year's incoming class were similar. So I think it hovers around there, um, but it could change. And... They actually, the other cool thing about Dalhousie is when all is said and done after you, if you interview and everything, they'll send you a little score sheet. So it will tell you what your score was for MCAT and GPA, for supplemental form and for your interview. So you can actually see exactly where you bombed and why you didn't get accepted if you are me. Um, so, I mean, at least it tells you what you need to work on. That stuff's actually like really useful if you ever have to it is. reapply it or is something. It is super yeah. useful. I think Alberta sends one to, like, the University of Alberta. UBC sends it as well if you didn't get accepted. That's so nice of them. Yeah. Yeah, it is. it does. It's nice to, like, because otherwise you're just sitting there and you're like, where did it all go wrong? 
No, um, honestly, it's a huge... For me, it went wrong with my supplemental. So my extracurriculars apparently were not good enough for Dalhousie. But they only accept nine out of province students, so I'm not beating myself up over it, okay? I mean, you're in med school now. You're, you're good. I think you're good. <laughs> I mean, I think yeah, you're you, fine. you've done what you need to do. It's all yeah, good. You're doing <laughs> fine. And you got to meet uh, us, which is the most important. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. If yeah. you went to Dal, you wouldn't be part of this podcast, would you? No, and I'd probably be a lot colder. A lot colder. Who knows? Maybe you could have done. A lot of snow. You probably could have done rowing there, though. But uh, oh well. yeah, I could have. I actually looked it up before I applied. I talked about it in my interview. That was the issue. <laughs> the they rowing. were like, "Get, <laughs> get her out of here! Like, They're no. crazy. Rowers are crazy." <laughs> They're probably like, "Oh no, our rowing team's too good already. If she joins, it's gonna be worse. We can't. We have to send her away." I'm not here to talk smack about Dalhousie's rowing team. However. I come from the highly esteemed trend rowing program, so of course I, any team would be lucky to have me. Did, did you go to trend? Did you go to trend? Did you do rowing? <laughs> okay, guys, I'm convinced that if I don't mention Trent on every podcast, the episode becomes cursed. You're very superstitious. It's very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's Ali, very, thank very you, thank you. I don't want this episode to be cursed, yeah. so thank you for bringing up Trent as always. Can we You're just welcome. email them and like get a sponsorship already? Like, we should Dude. just start every podcast like, oh, this podcast pod- brought to you by Trent University. They emailed me and asked me to, like, submit a little written thing about my experience with the Biomed program. And I was like, yes, Trent fame. Love it. And then they never posted it. Yeah. So rude. I mean, well, maybe sad. they're trying to save it for, uh, do you know when they're supposed to post it? No, they were supposed to be redoing the Biomed website, which they haven't done yet. So I'm assuming things got sidetracked with COVID and I'm holding out hope that it will be there one day yeah it'll probably be well, there that's, eventually. that's a fair that's a fair like thought yeah i would say yeah all right let's um continue with the last university of today if you guys are ready one. saskatchewan i don't know why i said it like that but saskatchewan okay wait wait before we start this yeah yeah, 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 yeah. i just whoa, want whoa. to talk about something really quickly okay, okay, okay um apparently it is not saskatchewan it's saskatchewan saskatchewan i've heard that as well saskatchewan yeah Okay, I don't want to tell my source for this is TikTok. Um, but I was I, I don't think that's a very valuable. But apparently it is Saskatchewan, not Saskatchewan, and that's like it's okay, I don't want to say it's like Toronto, Toronto or Toronto. Um, but it, it's Or Calgary not. versus Calgary. Calgary. Um, is it Chatham or is it Chatham? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> that that's just out like I don't like. I don't want to say that's the same thing, but yeah, apparently it's Saskatchewan win. But they always taught us Saskatchewan. And really, I never knew that. So, Maybe because they're always. I like, know we do have some Saskatchewan listeners, so so yeah. If you want to DM us and tell us which one is right, because is yeah. it because they're I'm always? I'm actually very curious. Is it because they're always Saskatchewan winning? <laughs> okay, I'll stop. I knew you were gonna say that. I knew you were gonna say that. <laughs> oh no like he gets one good joke last week and thinks that he is just the joke master now I add the drum master. sounds in again but i like how you lined it up to my hands <laughs> sorry okay okay um let, let's try this again so now we're gonna do saskatchewan win is that right i <clears> think yeah, so you did think great that's what it's all right you did so great thank you thank you um the application for this will actually open up in august so Similar to Manitoba, it's not opened up yet, but do go on the website, you know, check it uh, or keep checking in August to see when that does open. But the deadline to apply is out, which is going to be October 1st. So a lot of schools deadline is around October 1st this year, which is pretty good because usually other years it's kind of all scattered around. Um, I don't know if that's do- I don't know if that's due to COVID or what, but um, a lot of deadlines this year are October 1st in Saskatchewan. One thing is that non-academic activities are not really considered. Um, like, you will do the MMI if you get an interview, and that's where they kind of see your non-academic abilities and stuff like that. But in terms of just getting an interview, it's going to be all based on academics. There's going to be a few different pools based on your residency and diversity elements, and each pool has its own rank list. So... Number one is a Saskatchewan resident. And then you have a non-Saskatchewan resident. You have the Indigenous Admissions Pathway. 
And then the last one is the Diversity and Social Accountability's Admissions Program, the DSAP. And we will have a episode talking about different pathways, I think, next week. So we'll go into more detail on the Indigenous Pathways and DSAP and things like that. But um, yeah, you have different streams you can apply to. And the ranking for admission for non-Saskatchewan residents is based 100% on the MMI. So your GPA, MCAT, everything could be good. You'll get the MMI interview. But after that, if you're not Saskatchewan resident, it's all based on how you perform on the MMI, which is, I mean, that can help some people. That can break some people. It really depends. But if you are a Saskatchewan resident, the applicant, uh, the applicants will be seen as 20% MCAT total score, 30% their calculated uh, GPA, and then 50% MMI. So if you are a Saskatchewan resident, they'll look at your GPA and MCAT um, after the MMI process as well. But uh, let's just go into their academic requirements for now. You will re- need a four-year undergraduate degree. Um, so three-year degrees do not work for Saskatchewan. And courses taken after the awarding degree will not count towards the GPA unless the courses are counting towards another degree. So that's something to keep in mind. The transcripts and any other documents uh, must be submitted by October 15th. Saskatchewan residents have to have a GPA above 75%, I believe. And then it's 85% for non-Saskatchewan residents. But yeah, for MCAT, they score the most recent MCAT, not the best one. So I know we were talking before about I forgot which school it was. Was it Alberta, where, which looks at the best MCAT? Saskatchewan is slightly different, where they look at the most recent MCAT, not necessarily the best MCAT. And um, this is a little bit iffy or a little bit confusing, I guess. But what you have to do is submit your MCAT scores before the application deadline. But then you must resubmit your MCAT sp- scores specifically between October 30th, 2020 and November 6th, 2020. I'm not really sure the reason as to why you have to do this, but it is something that you have to do and they stress this on their website. It must be some way on how their uh, system or program is handled, which I don't understand too much myself, but just know that you pretty much have to submit your MCAT scores twice to Saskatchewan. Um, But yeah, in terms of the actual MCAT scores itself, uh, it changes based on the application pool, but Last year, I think the cutoff was 492 for Saskatchewan residents with bio being 123, chem being 123, psych being 123, and cars being 122. On their website, they do stress that these cut points are most likely going to be used again for Saskatchewan residents. For non-residents, the cutoff is 510. So if you have under 510, I don't think they'll look at your application at all. But um, And you'll need at least a 127 in each section. That's just kind of like the cutoff. They still look at the MCAT based on the pool. So last year, I think for non-Saskatchewan residents who were applying, the interview invitation cutoff total score was a 519. So that gives kind of an idea that you do need a pretty high MCAT score when applying to Saskatchewan, even though they say 510 is the cutoff on their website. And they say that the car section score and the calculated GPA is used to break the ties for interview and waitlist offers. For references, and I think this is pretty interesting for Saskatchewan, they contact references in late March or early April, and what it actually is is a 10 to 15 minute phone call. And you want to have somebody that either supervise you as a reach to supervisor or immediate supervisor in employment or a volunteer role, specifically within the last five years. And you, so they're just trying to look for people that have known you recently is the main thing but after that like most schools we were talking about today casper must also be written for uh saskatchewan as well so that's something to keep in mind but i think that is it that's a wrap that's a wrap yeah so next week we will talk about um these special pathways i know we kind of glossed over a few today But we'll go more into depth next week. And then in the following weeks, we will talk about Quebec as well. So if you're applying to McGill or any of the other Quebec schools, uh, just wait for that podcast. McGill. McGill. (laughs) How do you want me to say it? McGill. McGill. 
I don't know why I said it like that. But if you're playing a McGill, how about that? You're Abby's right. tired. I'm Thank tired. You. Yeah. I don't wake good. up. We're recording in the morning. I don't wake up this early, even though it's 12 p.m. now. <laughs> it sounds really it's bad been, when you say like that. It's, um, <laughs> it's okay. But yeah. Pandemic time. It's different. Am I right? Pandemic time. Pandemic is different. Time. Um, Alrighty. but yeah, so if you aren't following us on social media, make sure you pop over and check those out. Um, we are Tacky Talks on every social media platform, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, uh, and we love to hear from you guys. So DM us. We usually post an Instagram story asking for questions for that week's topic. So if you have any questions, you can DM us or you can fill those out. Um, and we're going to start posting more resources soon. I know we just kicked off our resources page last week, but keep an eye on that because more will be coming. And, um, that's it. You've been listening to episode six of Tacky Talks, talking about application to medical schools outside of Ontario, but also not Quebec. (laughs) Thanks Thanks for joining us. Thanks for hanging out. Thank you. Bye.